Getting your robot's mechanisms dialed in is make or break in robotics. If you're looking for proven ideas for your intake outtake or how to build a really effective pivoting arm, you need to see what Team 26857 came up with this season. Their designs, especially a clever zombie axle rotating arm, which is a mixture of both alive and dead axle rotation, solve some common FTC challenges in a really unique way. Understanding how they designed and built these mechanisms can give your team a serious competitive edge and spark ideas you can actually use. I'm Coach Pratt, and I've coached national champion FTC teams and won Inspire Boards. And I sat down with 26857 in this video. We'll break down exactly how that slick pivoting arm works, getting the details straight from the teams themselves. Let's dive in. Here's a quick breakdown of the 2024 FTC Seasons game into the deep. The game is played on a 3 by 3 meter field with two alliances with two robots on each red and blue alliance respectively. Robots had to go into the center structure to collect plastic rectangular prisms and place them in the respective baskets on the corners of the field for 8 points. Or they could bring a sample to a human. This human adds a special clip to the plastic piece and then that allows the robot to hang this piece from the center bar for 10 points. In the last stages of the match, the end game, robots can hang from the bottom rung for 15 points, or grab the bottom bar, lift themselves up off the ground, and then grab the top bar and lift themselves up for 30 points. There are more complexities to the game, but that's a rough idea. Now, let's see how this robot managed those challenges. How it works is that it all is driven by a gearing system here on the mm -hmm. side. Okay. Yep. Those are, I believe, 84 RPM motors mm -hmm. that drive the shaft. This is all pivoting off of a yep. very unique type of axle. It just takes a little bit of time to get oh, this. Oh, yeah. Doing it by hand. I totally feel you. Plus, it's probably really tight on those uh, chains as well, too. Correct. Yeah. Yep. So you have live axles and you have dead axles. This is called a zombie axle. Yep. So it is the two directly combined to allow two outputs on one shaft. Yep. So because of that, we are able to combine, com make this compact to where we only were using this one space and we keep the motors still within the chassis. Mm -hmm. That was a big issue we had when we were first looking into this design is how yep. do we allow it to extend without having to add the motor as a part of the pivoting system, Yep, which we did not want. It added it adds weight. It completely changes your center of gravity. We wanted to avoid that. Do you, uh, last question on this one, do you got like a hard lock to stop it from falling over here or is it no. uh, software? It is right. software. We okay. use PIDs. Yeah. Okay. Um, yep. It does not go past 92 degrees. You just use these. Odometry pods there, I'm assuming for it. Yes, we do. Yeah, we also okay. use the motor encoders under certain circumstances. Okay, yeah. the majority of the time, we will use that yeah. in board. Okay. On board encoder. Your cable management is super clean, too. I really yeah. like. Yeah, super clean. And I love this. Too many teams don't yes. go through yeah. and actually label. I love it. He do you label it up. up top near the motor as well? I yes, assume. We do. Life, yes, we do. Yeah, beautiful. Super clean. And is this. Take just a way to stop it from random cables falling in, that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, so yeah. we actually had an issue. There's some wire, so especially this system yes. right here. Yeah, that's a big guy. This yep. moves yep. slightly up, Yep. but it doesn't have a way to properly fall back down. And because so of that, we actually would side. scissor some yep. of our... Yep, 100%. How do you find your scissor lift here as a cable management platform? As a cable management yep. uh, system, it is amazing. Yep. We, don't really like uh, scissor lifts. They yep. break. 100%. Often. But as, a, as a passive, I've seen. Have you found this one to be relatively reliable for you? Or yes, have you this found one it? hasn't broken yet. Okay, good. Which is, the first. that's a first for us. Yep. Every time we've ever used one of these, they just break almost immediately and we just have to repair the yep. time. Yep. But this one has worked great. And where'd you get this design? I've seen a few teams use a similar idea. We I like designed your that ourselves. It. Okay, so cool. So I'm pretty sure our... You need on? All right. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure our design guy got some examples, but then yeah. quickly after yeah. that, he came up with his own version. Super slick. I really like that. And then you've yeah. got your your embedded nuts in there as well. That's a great way of getting Masumi slides together yep. without adding a lot of extra space in between because that's one of the biggest frustrations for teams is there's just not a lot of space between them. That's a really clever, really clever little thing. 
How have you found their reliability? I imagine pretty reliable for you. Pretty reliable. I'm noticing you've got a pretty harsh angle coming off of one of your points here before it leans up to the next one. Correct. Have you skipped any any belts on that? Or sorry, not belts. Have you slipped any strings? Slipped? Yeah. Um, no. Nope. Pulley? You have not. Okay, that's successful. Nice. The biggest issue specifically is since it's not directly guided. Yep. They that's tend it. to build up, build up on the sides, and a couple times it hops over this way. Yeah. And it starts building up right here. Yeah. But it's not what we want. Any reason you didn't make this slightly wider? Look or is yeah, it just that too late? spacing right there. That's uh, why. Okay. Yeah. We yeah, do not 100%. have the space. You don't have it. Yeah. So, yep. to compensate, we just made this extremely, extremely tight. <laughs> we have an adjustable system up here. So, yeah, you guys way, if it needs to be tighter, yeah. it yeah. can be tighter. What are you using for making it more adjustable? So, just a spring or do you have a... It's just a spring right Oh, it's just a zip tie that you pull tighter and that allows Correct. you to do... Yep. It yep. used to be a screw, but the screw didn't have enough space on it for us to adjust it even more. So, Ooh. as of two days ago, we swapped it to a zip tie. Yep. It also so looks like you bored home. something through here at some point. Yes. So what's, what's the story behind that? Clearly, there is a story. Yes, there is. Yeah, yeah. That this was initially a slot for a limelight. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But the limelight was giving us a bunch of issues with so. detecting if it was plugged in or not, because it yeah. shared a similar address to our servo hub. Mm -hmm. okay, yeah, so, so it, was, it, it would keep on forgetting. MITC, yeah. And yeah. there is a way to fix yeah. it by reconfiguring everything yep. in the system. Yep. Which there would be nothing wrong with that except to reconfigure the servo hub. Yep. You have to change the entire address, yes. which is about minimum a thousand lines of code. Uh, yeah, I'm assuming you're not using environmental variables for that. Okay. Yeah. So. Yep. It's yep, lesson, lesson learned, right? Yep, so yeah. we made the quick swap yep. to Logitech, yes. and yes. that's where that hole comes in yep. place. 100%. So also, what's your hot glue comes yes. in, so I would imagine, yeah. This is a level two pivot system that we yep. added literally two days ago. Okay. <laughs> so while we were here, we yep. added it. Yeah. We had an initial And system. how is that? been for you has it been successful it's been successful once. okay yes once well because okay. we only been able to properly test it but this is what i'm asking is was that successful for you or not and what what made it challenging and that it's only worked once the fact that we so it actually wasn't initially a level two it was a level three okay yep yep but the slides were not strong enough for us to go for a level three and the geometry of the hooks at first did not work either. Yeah, okay. We just didn't do it right the first time and yeah. we found that out way too late. So yeah. at first we abandoned yeah. the idea of a level, any type of ascent. Yeah. But our main design guy, he came in and he actually created this last minute yeah. and it's been just a bunch of yep. uh, updating it, making sure that everything is going to work properly. Yep. We've yep. only been able to properly test it once because the geometry is still something that difficult. One time it was too low. Yep. One time it was too high. Yep. What's your mechanism in here doing? So that is You've got a linear rail in there. Correct. Yep. So the geometry is just right to where it barely fits over. Yeah. So then this comes down and clamps on Oh, it drives it down to hold it onto the bar. Then these, I don't remember which type of servos these are, yeah, but they have like a an ton axon, of yeah. torque. Yeah, uh, and you're also got a pretty hard gear reduction on exactly. that too, right? Yeah. So it's yeah. like I can't even. Uh, I'm not surprised. Yeah, yeah, we're also fighting against this stuff. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, that's what allows us to pivot. Yep. Off the ground. Yep. And these are strong enough to keep it within this T. The geometry yep. with our center of gravity, unless yep. if it's completely enclosed, there's no such thing as a harsh enough geometry to keep us on that bar. Yeah. With it completely yeah, you just side. Skip it would right have out. to be on yeah. the center for yeah. us. Yeah, 100%. So, yeah, because you're right on the side. Do these stay in this position all game? They do not. They do not. They okay. start lower. They and start low and you, why you let them out. Uh, that allows them to pull them back. Correct. Because if you didn't have this, it's a little bit of a, a it's backlash. It's going to stay down here. Yeah, right. I got you. Okay. Yep. Yep. 100%. What are you particularly proud of? The zombie axle, because yeah. that took a bunch of research and us yep. coming up with that by ourselves to find it. Yep. Yep. 100%. I love your kind of little interlocking mechanism you use to be able to actually clip them all together too, right? Yep. I'm assuming, is there is it glued inside? Is it, is it a lock? Is it a press fit? How it does that is, actually look internally? The pulleys? 
Yeah, I'm talking about this little interlocking mechanism yeah, to be able to mount it together. It's just Sam. a it's just a bolt inside. Bolts. Beautiful. I'm assuming that's on the other side. You can't see it. Yeah. 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 Really nice. It allows us to swap out different size pulleys when we need to. Yep. We had smaller ones on, so we took yep. those off and put big yep. ones on. Yep. Yep. Yeah.